Hi, today we're going to talk about stewardship. In this season of giving, I think it's an important thing to consider because stewardship isn't simply about giving money, but it's about, in its original context, being an administrator of an estate, especially a royal estate. So how does that apply to us as Christians? Well, this is a season of giving because the ultimate gift happened during this time period in which we celebrate Christmas and the giving of Jesus Christ from God the Father to us to, to give us salvation. And as stewards of Christ, it is our job to spread that message and to spread that hope of salvation through our money, but also through our spiritual gifts and through our time. When I first came to Grove United Methodist Church, I had someone greet me, and that's an act of stewardship, and encouraged me to come back. And then the next, the next week I brought back my family, and my family my, has my wife and my twin two, uh, three-year-olds now, almost four-year-olds, and someone was willing to step up and serve in the nursery, and that's an act of stewardship. And because of those things, it has allowed me to become a steward. It's allowed me to become a steward with my time, and it's allowed my wife to become a steward with, with her financial gifts. And with my time, I've been able to set up ministries in this church, such as Coffee Fellowship and being part of Families First, and just recently creating a young adult Bible study. I serve with my time but you might be able to serve in your own way. So whether you're at home and you're able to give financially, or you're able to make a phone call, or you're, or you're here at church and you're able to give through your time and your services, stewardship looks just as the body of Christ in many different ways and in many different forms. And we hope that you will continue to give in this time of giving and continue to serve and be a part of the body of Christ. Thank you. Hello, I am Libby Watts, and I've been a member of this church a long time. I was baptized in Grove Avenue Methodist Church. Then my family moved away when I was a baby. We lived in Alabama, Missouri, and Utah before coming back to Radford when I was in high school. Skip and I married in the Grove Avenue Methodist Church. Then we lived in Harrisonburg, Indiana, and Northern Virginia before moving back to Radford. I've played music and attended services in Methodist, Baptist, Episcopalian, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Mormon, Catholic, and Disciples of Christ churches. I've attended churches from Boston to Arizona and California. It has given me a broad perspective on being United Methodist versus other Christian churches. So why United Methodist and why Grove? There's a joy in a United Methodist worship service. We like music and we like to sing. Our choir at Grove is a close-knit family within the larger family of the church. So is the handbell choir. I've always loved music, so it's been a natural fit for me to participate in church music. Considering all Methodist churches I have attended, one common link they share is that it's a happy experience. Methodists are welcoming, accepting, non-judgmental, and they have a social conscience. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, black or white, or rainbow colored. You're welcome at a Methodist church. Our church has Bible studies, book club. We have participated in social projects over the years, such as Habitat for Humanity, supporting mission work, the local food pantry, the local clothing bank, helping house homeless men and women, and the community table. When you join the United Methodist Church, the vows include to faithfully participate through your prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. We are a family of believers, and like any family, we have responsibilities to care for each other and to care for our church building. It takes time, work, and money to keep up our ministries and our church building. I urge you all to search your hearts. How can you help your church family? Can you participate more fully in the programs of the church? Can you help a little more with your time or your money? What do you love about being a part of this church? How can you make it stronger?
Welcome to Grove United Methodist Church on this Christ the King Sunday. Today, we recognize the coming of Christ as our King, our Lord, and our Savior forever. Here at Grove United Methodist Church, we love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and all of our neighbors as ourselves. Today, that all our neighbors is important because today we talk about living abundantly in God's world and what that means. I'm here in our Grove Children's area. Today, we are prepared to receive all the children who come to be with us and worship with us to be part of Grove United Methodist family. Let us worship God together. Today's call to worship comes from Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. Know that the Lord who, is made, who made us is God. We are the Lord's. We are the people of God, the sheep of God's pasture. Enter God's gates with thanksgiving and God's courts with praise. Give thanks and bless God's name. For the Lord is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. God's faithfulness to all generations. Please bow with me for the prayer for illumination. Almighty God, we thank you for this day and we thank you for your word. Be with us now as we share the word together 
and help us to find ways to apply it to our lives daily. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Today's New Testament reading comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I assure you that when you have done it for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you have done it for me. Amen. Thank you, Dave. Thank you for the reading of God's holy word for God's people. Will you go with me to the Lord in prayer? Let us pray. Holy God, we come thanking you that you have called us, that you have claimed us, and that we are yours. Holy Spirit, thank you for being here with us, opening our minds and hearts to hear your word, to hear you speak into our hearts and to our lives. And as we come now to this sermon, we ask that you will continue to be with us, to give us understanding, and that that understanding may warm our hearts and enable us to move into your world by the power of your Holy Spirit, to speak your word that transforming word to others. Amen. Well, here we are, the week after Thanksgiving. Did you enjoy your Thanksgiving? I hope so. Um, you know, there is a favorite thing that we do around my house after Thanksgiving, and that is to eat up the leftovers. We give what we can away to others, and then what is left we have a meal and we share in those leftovers. We did that at my house the day after Thanksgiving on Black Friday. We gathered for a noontime meal. It was my siblings, my niece, and my brother-in-law. And as we gathered together, it dawned on me, how many times do we bless the Thanksgiving meal? I mean, after all, it is leftovers, right? 
So I gathered, as we gathered, I looked at everyone and I said, well, we've blessed it one time, but, and turning to my brother-in-law, I asked him, would you mind blessing our food again? And he did. And it was a beautiful prayer. I don't remember all that he said, but there was a particular line that he used in his prayer and it struck my heart as he prayed. Lord, help us to live abundantly in this life. Of course, I was thinking about our sermon today to live abundantly. And what does that really mean as Christians as we think about the abundance, especially in this season as we move from Thanksgiving into Advent? Does it mean to have enough to get by? Or does it mean to have the things that we think we need or we want? I'm not sure. But we all know that Black Friday is one of the biggest shopping days of the year. Do you know how Black Friday originated? I was visiting with one of our church members this week, and we were talking about that very thing. And they said, well, you know, Black Friday really originated with the retail world. You see, in the retail world, for most of the year, from January forward, most retail businesses function in what they call the red, or a deficit. And traditionally, years ago, when retail accounting books were kept, all of those deficits were written in red ink. That is until they started nearing the holidays. And the retailers noticed, as we all do, that we tend to spend more over the holiday seasons. And so they went from the red into the black. And therefore, they started, started promoting Black Friday, which was like the kickoff to the retail businesses moving from deficits to profits. Black Friday. Our church member went on to say, I thought really quite interestingly, that churches don't participate in Black Friday. Now, have you ever thought about that? Because traditionally, this time of year, churches do look toward their annual giving in preparation for their 2024 budgets. But churches don't participate in Black Friday deals. And then this church member went on to say that Churches should never be operating in the red, never operating in a deficit. As Christians, our first obligation is always to Christ and Christ's church. Our church, our member said, should never be hurting for funds or for persons, or we call them disciples, working for Christ. At that point, I started joking with her, and I said, all right, so on Sunday morning, you're going to stand before our virtual worship community, and you're going to stand before our gathering worship community, and you're going to deliver the sermon, because it was awfully powerful, the words that she was sharing with her pastor. And I have to say, she blessed my heart that day and reminded me of what it means to be a servant of Christ, not just a season but for a lifetime. The truth is, God really does care about the way we spend our money. God cares about the way we spend our time, our spiritual gifts, our talents, our very lives. God cares deeply about that. In Matthew 25, Jesus puts it this way. Jesus says, on the last day, that judgment day, God will take a look at the way that we budget our lives, counting our profits and our losses. There will be a group on his left, we are told, who are the ones who lived in the red, who, as we draw from last week's sermon, who lived their lives for themselves, gaining all that they could, not for others, but for themselves, not for the glory of God, but for themselves. And a group on his right who, who lived in the black. And he will say to those that are on his right, When I was hungry or thirsty or naked or lonely or in prison, you were there for me. 
you were there for me. I'm always struck by this parable that Jesus is telling to the community because those on the right-hand side of the king did not know that they were living for Christ. They did not know that they were living for the king. They did not know that they were serving Christ, the king, by serving others. They were living an abundant lifestyle. And it had nothing to do with how much money or merchandise or things that they had. On the day after Thanksgiving, when the rest of the world was shopping for Black Friday, I was eating leftovers with family. And after we finished the meal and we gathered the dishes, my family began to leave and to return to their homes. At that point, I turned to my brother-in-law and I thanked him for his prayer. The prayer in which he asked God to help us live more abundantly. And then I asked him, what? does abundant living mean to you? And you know what he said? He said this, to live fully, to fully live in this world. And then he went on to say, and I quote, we are to live our lives more fully as our Lord wants us to live as God draws us into this amazing kingdom that God has prepared for us. You know, before God became flesh and dwelt among us in the one we call Jesus, God called a prophet by the name of Daniel. And God gave Daniel a vision of this last day. And Daniel wrote that vision down in a book. And in chapter 12 of that book, we read these words. At that time, Michael, the archangel who stands guard over your nation, will arise. Then there will be a time of anguish greater than any since nations first came into existence. But at that time, every one of your people whose name is written in the book will be rescued. Many of those whose bodies lie dead and buried will rise up, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting disgrace. It's the separating of the sheeps and the goats that we hear in the parable that Jesus shares with us today in Matthew. Daniel goes on to write, Those who are wise will shine as bright as the sky, and those who lead many to righteousness will shine like stars forever. Look with me again in Matthew 25. Jesus says, When the Son of Man, by the way, Son of Man is the title that Jesus most often uses for himself in this gospel. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit upon his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered in his presence. And he will separate the people as a shepherd separated the sheep from the goats. And after all the separating, after all the judging is done, then King Jesus will say to the sheep on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. Why? Because, Jesus says, when I was thirsty, when I was hungry, when I was naked, a stranger, sick, in prison, you cared for me. I have a chronological Bible that I like to turn to from time to time. And I noticed that the footnote in that chronological Bible on this particular passage 
read like this. These acts, acts of mercy, do not depend on wealth, ability, or intelligence. They are simple acts, freely given and freely received. We have no excuse, the footnote says, to neglect those who have deep needs, and we cannot hand over the responsibility to the institutional church. That one really kind of made me think about it. It's not the institutional church's responsibility, nor, the footnote says, the government's responsibility. But Jesus demands our personal involvement. Your involvement, my involvement, the involvement of individuals collectively or individually caring together for others' needs. The sheep in this parable at the end times in Matthew that Jesus shared, these sheep that are on his right hand, friends, they were just doing life until Jesus came again. They were doing life the way their Lord, King Jesus, had taught them. And in doing so, they were living a full life, most abundant life that they knew how. When, Lord, when we never saw you, we were just living life the way you taught us to live the way you call us to do. Amen and amen. In response to God's word read, proclaimed today, and in the songs that we have sung together, and in the worship that we have shared, I invite us to affirm that which we believe. Behind me is a cross and a crown, which is part of the pyramids that we use for Christ the King Sunday. You will notice that the cross reminds us of the sacrifice that Jesus made for us that we might have eternal life. The crown reminds us that Jesus Christ is Lord and King of this church and of our lives and that Christ is coming again and will draw all nations unto himself and every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Let us affirm our faith together from an affirmation based on Ephesians 1, 15 through 23. The words will be on your screen. Since I have heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, this is the reason I don't stop giving thanks to God for you when I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, will give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation that makes God known to you. And the people respond, May the eyes of our hearts have enough light to see what is the hope of God's call, the richness of God's glorious inheritance among believers, and what is the overwhelming greatness of God's power that is working among the believers here at Grove United Methodist Church. And the people respond, This power we receive by the energy of God's powerful strength. God's power was at work in Christ when God raised him from the dead and sat him at God's right side in the heavens, far above every ruler and authority and power and angelic power, any power that might be named, not only now, but in the future. And the people respond, yes, we agree and we believe. God put everything under Christ's feet and made him head of everything in the church in Grove United Methodist Church, which is his body. His body, the church, is the fullness of Christ, who fills everything in every way. And the people respond, yes, 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 glory to God. Amen.
So we close our worship, gathering back in our children's space, as a reminder that we are all called to grow in Christ as Christians, serving God and one another. May we go in the peace of Christ, and as we go, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his shalom. Amen.